This is a recording of the solution to the 1998 AP Chemistry exam, free response question number one, which is related to the solubility equilibrium of partially soluble salts. Question A says that the solubility of copper 2 hydroxide solid is 1.72 times 10 to the minus 6 grams per 100 milliliters of solution at 25 degrees C. And question I asks you to write the balanced chemical equation for the dissociation of copper hydroxide in aqueous solution. So here's what that would look like. We're starting out with copper 2 hydroxide. So the formula is CuOH2, and it's solid. And it's going to dissociate, but not completely, because this is only a partially soluble salt, to give you copper 2 plus in aqueous solution and two hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So that's the answer to their first question, I. And II, the next question, says to calculate the solubility in moles per liter of copper 2 hydroxide at 25 degrees C. Well, they actually give us the solubility already. It's just not in the units that we want. They tell us that the solubility is 1.72 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of copper 2 sulfate that dissolve in every 100 milliliters of solution. So molarity, molar concentration, is what we're trying to find, and that's moles per liter. So the first thing we can do is we can convert grams to moles by using molar mass. The molar mass of copper 2 hydroxide is 97.56 grams per one mole. So with grams canceling out here, that gives us moles per milliliter, but we want moles per liter. So we'll just make a quick conversion here by knowing that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And when we calculate the answer, we find that it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative seventh moles per liter. So that's the answer to I. Question III asks us to calculate the value of the solubility product constant, KSP, for copper 2 hydroxide at 25 degrees C. Well, KSP for this salt is going to be equal to the concentration of copper ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions squared. What is that actually under these conditions? Well, a rice chart will help us with that. So let's set up a rice chart. Here's copper hydroxide in equilibrium with copper 2 plus and hydroxide ions, two hydroxide ions. Initial concentration, well, we don't have any of the products. The change, every mole of copper hydroxide we lose, we'll gain a mole of copper ion and we'll gain two moles of hydroxide ion. So when we reach equilibrium, we'll have x moles of copper ion, and we'll have 2x moles of hydroxide ion. Now, Ksp, then, in terms of our chart, would be x, because that's concentration of copper ion in solution at equilibrium, times 2x net quantity squared, because that is the concentration of hydroxide ion. And the coefficient on hydroxide is 2. Well, X, among other things, means the solubility in moles per liter of copper 2 hydroxide, how much dissolves. So the X value that we calculated from part II, we can just substitute that in here. If you take X times 4X squared, which is what 2X quantity squared is going to be, you'll end up with 4X cubed. So plugging that in, plugging the value from part II in, we'll get KSP is equal to 4 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7th cubed, and that ends up being 2.2 times 10 to the negative 20. And that's our KSP value. Part B. Part B is about a different salt, and it's sort of starting us over here uh, with zinc hydroxide rather than copper 2 hydroxide. So let's slide up and make ourselves some space and begin this problem. Question B tells us that the value of the solubility product constant, KSP, for zinc hydroxide is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 17th at 25 degrees C. And question I asks us to calculate the solubility in moles per liter of zinc hydroxide at 25 degrees C in a solution that has a pH of 9.35. Well, if the zinc hydroxide was just dissociating in water, this would be the dissociation. Zinc 2 plus aqueous would be formed, and you would have two hydroxide ions formed. So it's very similar to the part A dissociation. 
Now, if we were doing a rice chart, I would be zero for zinc ion, and it would also be zero for OH minus if we were in pure water, but we're not in pure water. We're in water that has a pH of 9.35. So if the pH is 9.35, the hydroxide ion concentration isn't zero like it would be in pure water. So we're going to have to figure out what it actually is. One thing we know is that the concentration of hydroxide ion is going to be 10 to the negative pOH. And we also know that pOH is going to be 14.00 minus the pH. So in this case, that's 14.00 minus 9.35, because that's what our pH is. And so that means our pOH value is 4.65. So with a pH of 4.65, that means the hydroxide ion concentration that we're starting out with here, initial hydroxide ion concentration, is going to be 10 to the minus 4.65, which is 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. So when we start with our rice chart, we're going to put for an initial concentration of hydroxide 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. What's the change? Well, we're going to lose some moles of zinc hydroxide. And because of one-to-one -one stoichiometry, we'll gain the same number of moles of zinc ion. And then we will gain two times the number of moles of hydroxide ion. So that at equilibrium, our concentration of zinc will be x. And our concentration of hydroxide will be 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth plus 2x. Well, we know that Ksp for this reaction is going to be equal to the concentration of zinc times the concentration of hydroxide ion squared, which in terms of our chart now means x times 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth plus 2x, and that quantity will be squared. But Ksp is a pretty small number. It's 10 to the negative 17th. So that means the extent of dissociation, the x value here, is going to be pretty small compared with the original concentration of hydroxide, probably. So we'll make a simplification, and we'll assume that 2x could be ignored here. And we can say that Ksp, which we know is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 17th, is pretty close to x times just 2.2 times 10 to the negative 5th squared. And then we'll find x. And x is equal to, among other things here, the solubility of zinc hydroxide. And we can find it by taking 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 17th and dividing it by the square of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5. And the answer that we get when we do that is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, a good way to quickly check and see if we have not violated the 5% rule is just see if this is within 5% of the starting concentration or not. So if we take 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7th, and we divide it by our initial concentration, 2.2 2 times, 2 .2 times 10 to the minus fifth, we get about 0.68%. So this was a very good assumption that a sim that simplification works out. So there's our answer. The solubility of zinc hydroxide in this basic solution is 1.5 times 10 to the negative seventh. Question II is a challenge. It says at 25 degrees C, 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar zinc nitrate is mixed with 50 milliliters of 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide. And we're supposed to calculate the molar concentration of zinc in the resulting solution once equilibrium has been established, assuming that volume, volumes are additive. So here's what would happen if we put zinc nitrate in water. Zinc nitrate, like all nitrate salts, is completely soluble. And so we will get zinc ions and two nitrate ions in solution. We started out with 50 milliliters of this solution, and the solution had 0 0.100 moles of zinc nitrate per liter. So that means we would end up with 5.00 millimoles of zinc nitrate, which would mean 5.00 millimoles of zinc ion, because it's one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So the concentration of zinc ion moles per liter would be equal to that 5.00 millimoles 
in the total volume. We added this with 50 milliliters of the other solution, so the total volume is now 100 milliliters. The milli part cancels out, and it just leaves us with molarity, and the concentration is 0 0.0500 molar. Here's what would happen if you put the sodium hydroxide in water. Like all sodium salts, this is going to dissociate completely, so you get Na pluses and OH minuses. And you had 50 milliliters of a solution, but this one was 0 0.300 moles per liter, so this is going to give us 15.0 millimoles of sodium hydroxide, which also means 15.0 millimoles of hydroxide ion because of one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So the concentration in moles per liter of hydroxide ion is going to be equal to 15.0 millimoles over that same 100 milliliters that the solutions make when they combine. So our concentration is now going to be 0 0.150 molar in hydroxide ion. So you might want to set up a rice chart here. Here's your reaction. What's going to happen when these two get together is zinc 2 plus will react with two hydroxide ions reversibly because it is partially soluble to make zinc hydroxide solid. Now K for this reaction is 1 over the KSP for the dissociation that we had up in part I. So that's 1 over 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 17th, which is 1.3 times 10 to the positive 16th. Now we'll set up our I, C, and E. Initial concentration of zinc was 0 0.05 moles per liter. Initial concentration of OH minus is 0 0.150, and no solid that we can are concerned about. What's the change? We'll lose x moles of zinc, we'll lose 2x moles of hydroxide, we'll gain x moles of zinc hydroxide. When we reach equilibrium here, we'll have 0 0.150 minus 2x, and we'll have 0 0.0500 minus x for our final concentrations of our ions. So here's what this would mean. Our k value, 1.3 times 10 to the 16th, is equal to... 1 over 0 0.05 minus x times 0.15 minus 2x quantity squared. Now, I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing a very difficult problem to solve. You're going to end up with an equation in the denominator on the right-hand side that's not a quadratic. It's a factor of 3. And this is complicated by the fact that you can't make any simplifying assumptions. To assume that a K value that's as big as 10 to the 16th is not going to dissociate very far is a very inaccurate assumption. And so we can't make any simplifications. That makes this a tough problem to solve. And even if you try and do it by graphing, you're going to have a really hard time finding the intersections, I think. If you try to do it on a solver, you're probably not going to be able to find a sign change. And so there might be a better approach. And so this is what I'm going to try. I'm going to assume that this reaction basically goes to completion, that the reaction completely moves in the right-hand direction at first. All the zinc and all the hydroxide that are available precipitate, and then it goes backwards. Then it redissociates. So how would that look? Well, first of all, if I start out with my zinc and my two hydroxides, and I'm going to precipitate these as zinc hydroxide solid. I start out with 0 0.0500 moles per liter of zinc and 0 0.150 moles per liter of hydroxide ion. That's my initial. What's my change? Well, the limiting reactant here is going to be zinc because the mole ratio is 1 to 2 between zinc and hydroxide. So if I precipitate out all 0 0.0500 moles per liter of zinc, I will only precipitate out double that amount, or 0 0.100 moles per liter of hydroxide, and I will gain 0 0.0500 moles per liter of zinc hydroxide. So at equilibrium, I basically have no zinc until it redissociates. I'll have 0.15 minus 0.1, which is 0.05 moles per liter of hydroxide 
left, and of course we don't care about the concentration of zinc hydroxide. So now we'll undo that. Now we'll re-dissociate here. So I'll do this in a different color. So now we have zinc hydroxide, which is all precipitated out now, we're assuming, and that's now going to re-dissociate to give us our zinc 2 plus ions and our two hydroxide ions. Initial concentration, don't care, zero, but it's not zero for OH minus because we just calculated that at the end of this precipitation, we're still going to have, because it's not the limiting reactant, 0 0.050 moles per liter of hydroxide ion. Here's our change. It's minus x, it's plus x, and it's plus 2x because of the stoichiometry. At equilibrium, then, the concentration of zinc will be x. The concentration of hydroxide ion will be the starting concentration, 0 0.050, plus the 2x that it gained. So the K, now because this is a dissociation, is KSP. And so that's going to be equal to concentration of zinc, which is now x, times concentration of 0 0.050 plus 2x quantity squared. But because KSP is little, remember this is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 17th, we can assume that that's approximately equal to x times 0 0.050 squared. So now we can solve for x, which will be equal to the zinc concentration at equilibrium. That's what we're trying to find. And when we solve it out, we find that it's 3.1 times 10 to the negative 14th moles per liter.